Today, we are delighted to be joined by Dr. Jiang from University of Adger in Norway, where he will talk about the challenges and opportunities in installation of wind turbines. As we know, global warming is a big issue that is affecting the political and economic climate of the planet. And uh, one of the remedies to alleviate the issue is actually the wind turbines. So I'm very interested to hear the state of the art and the current research. Uh, and Dr. Jiang is gonna uh, give us a presentation in this regard. Before we get to that, let me uh, talk a little bit about our journal, SN Applied Sciences. SN Applied Sciences was launched in 2018 and it comprises of multiple sections, engineering being one of them. By the way, I am Amin Fatemi, and I'm the managing editor of engineering in the journal. We have uh, five sections, uh, engineering one of them, earth and environmental sciences, chemistry and materials and physics, and also recently we have opened a new section, life sciences as well. Well, uh, these webinar sessions started not long ago, a few months ago, and this is a very good opportunity for our authors, uh, editorial board members, and guest editors to present their research or published article or their interesting topic of, topics of choice in the journal, uh, along with a lot of other good things that are in the journal, like meticulous peer review and the fast peer review and uh, a turnaround time, fast turnaround time, uh, and also the recent switch to open access, which makes all the articles freely available to the public. So it's a good opportunity for everyone to consider submitting to us. I see uh, a lot of people joining from around the world, from Netherlands we have, from Germany, from the UK, from India, from China, I see a lot of people joining. So welcome to everyone. Let me briefly introduce uh, our kind uh, presenter today, Dr. Jiang that accepted the invitation despite his very busy uh, schedule. So uh, Dr. Jiu Jiang received his bachelor and master's of master's degrees from Shanghai Jiao Tang University. In 2014, he obtained his PhD at the Department of Marine Technology at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Dr. Jiang's research interests include marine structures and offshore renewable energy. Very interesting. He is the research group leader of engineering materials and structures at the Department of Engineering Sciences at the University of Adger in Norway. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Jiang, I'm gonna stop sharing and please go ahead with the starting your presentation. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Amin Fatami for a very nice introduction. My name is Zhivi Jiang. I'm from University of Akta, uh, Norway. Um, so today I was going to talk about installation of offshore wind turbines, which is an emerging topic uh, for the even for the wind energy research uh, people. Um, first, a very brief brief introduction to our university. Where are we? We are located in the very southern tip of Norway, in a city called Grimstad. So we have very fun um, summer activities, including boating activities and some tours around the uh, Norwegian archipelagos. So yeah, for people not familiar with Norway, we are we are a very elong elongated country uh, with big cities like Trondheim, Oslo, Bergen, and Stavanger, and Tromsø. Yeah. We are located here. A little bit about my education and the work experience. You know, I have a background in naval architecture and ocean engineering, and now I'm currently doing research related to offshore wind energy. I've been working at the University of Agda since 2018. A brief overview of my research topic on offshore structures. I've been involved in design and analysis of different types of offshore structures, 
including uh, bottom fix and floating wind turbines, uh, offshore aquacultural structures, wave energy converters, floating bridges, or in the gas structures, um, single point mooring systems, as well as the floating solar energy devices, which is a uh, emerging topic these days. And my scope of work have, has covered conceptual design, numerical modeling and ana analysis, uh, failure mechanism like fatigue and erosion, and dynamics and control of those floating bodies, uh, probabilistic methods uh, to design structures in a safe, safe manner, as well as uh, marine operations. And today, my topic related to uh, installation of offshore wind turbines uh, actually falls under the category of marine operations. How do we perform those uh, operations offshore and to do it in a safe and cost efficient manner? This can be important research questions to the industry and to the uh, wind energy community as well. So uh, here's out, an outline of my talk. First, I will make a short introduction to the um, offshore wind energy. Then I will discuss numerical tools that can be applied uh, for, uh, to analysis of a wind turbine installation. Then I will cover three interesting um, subtopics. Uh, first, it will be the installation of single blade, uh, single blade for wind turbines. That means we install blade one piece by piece. The second method is a catamaran installation concept. That is, we employ a catamaran vessel to install the full assembly of wind turbine. Uh, the last concept is the floating door concept, which is a new concept and that was proposed uh, three years back. And I will touch upon the recent development of this concept. Finally, I will give an uh, outlook to the future uh, emerging topics in this area. And for those who are interested to pursue research in this area, you're welcome to, to, to look at those areas. When it comes to offshore wind turbines, um, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with uh, those different types of support structures. Uh, generally speaking, offshore wind turbines can be divided into two categories. The first category is called bottom fixed wind turbines. That is the basis of those wind turbines are connected to seabed. Generally speaking, when water depth is not uh, so much, then the wind, wind turbines can be connected to the seabed. Uh, so in a cost efficient, efficient manner. But when water depth increases, normally beyond 100 meters, then floating wind turbines are believed to be more cost effective compared to those uh, bottom fixed counterparts. For bottom fixed wind turbines, there are also different types of support structures, or sometimes called substructures. They can be gravity based foundation. If you look at the leftmost figure, GBF refers to the gravity based foundation. This is a concept that, has, uh, that uses concrete-based uh, large foundation, which is very applicable to very shallow water depths, usually less than 20 meters. For water depths um, ranging between 20 meters and 40 meters, even to 50 meters, then monopile foundations are believed to be very cost efficient because monopiles can be, um, can be manufactured in a very simple way, it's just one single cylinder. And it can be installed uh, also in a quite efficient manner. And it's believed that um, most of the uh, offshore wind turbines in Europe, uh, almost 90 to uh, 80 to 90% um, <coughs> are comprised of monopower foundations. Tripod jacket structures are also being used in offshore wind turbines of the day. And we believe that when water depth increases, and maybe beyond 50 meters, then jacket uh, foundations can be, can be cost effective because uh, jacket structures have very slender uh, tubular members. And these tubular members make the structure less subjected to wave-induced hydrodynamic loading so that we do not have very large loading on the support structure and wind turbine. Let's take a look at the rightmost three different types of floating wind turbines. TLP refers to the uh, tension leg platform type wind turbine. So this, uh, this type of floating wind turbine is supported by uh, tendons. The number of tendons can vary, 
but those tendons have quite large uh, tension, providing the uh, main source of restoring forces for the wind turbine when it deviates from its equilibrium position. The mid, uh, the mid figure semi sub is a semi submersible floating uh, wind turbine. Semi submersibles usually have relatively small draft and can be installed in a very efficient manner. The semi submersibles and spa floating wind turbines are quite popular these days because the technical maturity level for these uh, types of wind turbines are quite high. The spa wind turbine, as we can see, has a relatively deep draft and it is uh, very suitable to survive very harsh environmental conditions, typical of the North Sea. And in Norway, uh, we have the world's first spa floating wind turbine that has been operating off the coast of Stavanger since 2007. So this is a um, type of wind turbine with the one of the highest uh, technolo technology readiness level. When it comes to uh, installations, um, we typically need to use uh, different types of vessels. And uh, jack jackups and the floating heavy lift vessels are normally used. Here I show you three pictures uh, that, you, uh, that use jackup vessels. The, uh, the upper left corner shows us a jackup uh, vessel. The upper right corner shows us a um, floating heavy lift vessels. And the bottom figure shows us an installation of monopile formation using also a um, heavy lift vessel. The installation procedures of the uh, wind turbine foundations are quite similar to the ones used in the oil and gas industry. And in general, the vessels are huge in terms of lifting height and capacity. There's quite limited information regarding operational limits and they mostly rely on industrial experience. Normally, people are recommended to carry out those installations in relatively calm seas and uh, with a significant wave height of less than two meters. When it comes to installation methods for rotor blades, and the technology is relatively uh, immature, and there's no uh, converged technology regarding to which method uh, is best. The left, the left most figure shows us an, a burning ear configuration, uh, where we can see that the vessel lifts this uh, pre-installed nacelle with two blades in one single lift. Uh, for a normal horizontal axis wind turbine, which consists of three blades, that means that we have to uh, do another lift for the other remaining blade. The middle figure shows us an installation of full rotor by, carried out by Dong Energy and the present day Erstedt, which is a Danish, Danish company. We see that the whole rotor with three pre-assembled blades onto the nacelle is lifted in the air. So the advantage of such an installation method that you only need only one single lift to install the three blades offshore. But the downside is that these days, uh, wind turbine blades can get very long. And for 10 megawatt blades, uh, the, the length can easily top 100 meters. And how to hand such a giant a guy in the air can be very challenging, especially when the wind becomes uh, turbulent and uh, it's exerting aerodynamic loads on the full rotor lifted in the air. The rightmost figure shows us a, uh, the so-called single blade insulation method, which is catching up these days. Uh, this is a uh, insulation process done by the Fred Olesen wind carrier, which is a Norwegian company. Um, by its name, single blade insulation indicates that we lift each blade by itself. So this method has the advantage of maximum use, usage of the uh, vessel's deck, deck space. That means we can mount several, uh, we can install sufficient components on the deck space during the wind transport. And we need to lift each blade uh, by itself. The advantage is that, you know, to lift such one single blade, there's not very large aerodynamic loading acting on one blade, and we can do it yeah, quite easily, especially if we have the uh, right lift equipment. Of course, for three blades, we need three lifts 
um, when when individually. I will talk about the single blade insulation uh, in a while. There are also other insulation methods um, for, for floating wind turbines. Um, if you look at the left figure, which shows us installation of uh, high wind tampon floating wind farm, which is a spa floating wind farm consists of, that consists of five floating wind turbines. We see that Equinor employs this semi 7,000, which is a very large semi submersible uh, crane vessel to do the uh, lift of the pre assembled wind turbine assembly. But the daily rate of such a large semi submersible vessel can be very expensive. And it, is, uh, it was done by Equinor at that time. And we are wondering if there can be methods that are more cost efficient. The right figure shows us an, uh, a normal insulation vessel concept proposed by this Norwegian um, shipyard, Udestan. They propose this using this uh, insulation vessel to transport port and install pre-assembled wind turbines. Design and testing of normal uh, installation methods oftentimes rely on uh, res response-based prediction of those limiting operational conditions. And uh, you know those systems are very complex and numerical tools can help us provide response-based prediction of such complex systems. And here I will briefly um, discuss existing numerical tools that can be applied to perform simulations of uh, installation, uh, simulations of wind turbine installation. There are um, several numerical tools uh, existing on the market. Uh, here I will touch upon three. Uh, first one is called CIMO. Uh, it's, uh, CIMO stands for Simulation of Marine Operations. Second one is called HOC2. Information can be found on the HOC2 website. This is uh, more or less a, an air elastic tool developed by DTU Win. And finally, we can also apply MATLAB and Simulink to facilitate um, user specified needs. CIMO is a uh, simulation tool developed by Sintef Ocean in Norway. The essential features of CIMO uh, includes flexible modeling of multi body systems especially if you want to carry out nonlinear time domain responses of uh, multi-body systems subjected to wave, uh, wind, current, such environmental loads. We can also implement passive and active control forces uh, in CIMO. Here we see an ex ex application example of lowering of jack-up vessels. We see that the floating platform, the large vessel here in the middle. Here, it can be modeled by body type one in CIMO, including hydrodynamic forces, according to uh, diffraction radiation theory. For the long legs, these legs, they can be the hydrodynamic forces can be captured by using uh, slender elements, elements uh, which also means it's, uh, uh, we're using Morrison type elements. And for the mother pad, which will be in contact with uh, seabed, we can also use uh, body type three uh, with small body hydrodynamic data, which can vary uh, along with the depths. We can also include uh, some types of uh, spring stiffness, which can vary with depths to simulate the contact of mother pad with seabed. This is just a very uh, simple and brief um, example of uh, using CIMO to simulate the check the leg lowering process of checkup. When it comes to HOC2, which is a well-known area elastic tool uh, that is very suitable for calculating wind turbine responses in the time domain. Um, to the present day, HOC2 can be used to simulate various types of wind turbines and uh, GEED support structures as well. It uses a multi-body formulation 
uh, which gives it a certain degree of flexibility when it comes to modeling complex structures. Here are a few examples, uh, application examples that are already available on the HOC2 website. To simulate installation of single blades, we also applied HOC2 to simulate the blade lifting system. Finally, we can also uh, develop our own tool like MATLAB Simulink to facilitate uh, simulations of uh, user-defined activities. Basically, we can define a few modules, uh, including basic functions, environment modules, lifting equipment, payload, as well as some application examples. So we need to simplify the complex system uh, with, um, with, different, with several rigid bodies, then manage to connect those rigid bodies via uh, connections. Here, I will show you the model overview for, ins install, for installing a single blade. We see that we have, uh, we have a crane vessel, uh, which will uh, connect to the hook via lift wires. And the blade will be held in the air and while constrained by tugger wires um, to constrain the motion of the blade in the air. And this tool allows us to model uh, different parts separately. Then you can connect those models, modules and implement eventually uh, control actions, user specified control actions. If you're interested, you can also refer to the paper which was shown in the previous page. Uh, you can apply this open source tool to develop your own um, model. Here, I move on to um, a research work on installation of um, single blades. This work was carried out um, during 2017 and 18 when I was uh, doing my postdoc at NTNU. You can see that here is a scenario of offshore single blade insulation. Uh, we use a Jacob vessel to, to make the uh, crane vessel standing steadfast on the seabed. While the blade is being lifted by the crane uh, and the blade is uh, close to the, um, to the hub of the monopower wind turbine. So this is the final phase of the blade insulation. And we see that the blades are, con are constrained by tugger lines, so as to not to have too large motions in the air. And meanwhile, it also has a lift wire uh, connected to the crane top. For the monopile uh, foundation, it is, um, it is uh, bottom fixed to the seabed, but there will be wave and current uh, actions acting on the uh, foundation. So the power, the tower can oscillate um, for, um, back and forth when it is subjected to environmental loads. So one of the particular challenge when it comes to single blade insulation is, um, is related to the, to the mating between the blade root and the hub. As we can imagine that the blade can be subjected to aerodynamic loads while the uh, monopile will be subjected to hydrodynamic loads. So there will be relative, relative motion between those two parts. So this relative motion can create challenges when it comes to mating. Although the blade root will be uh, enhanced with some guide pins, guide pins which can help uh, facilitate the mating uh, where a crew member will, will be standing in the hub to facilitate the final process. But those guide pins can often become damaged if they are relative motions. Uh, and here we look at the uh, responses of the complex system and the different environmental condition. We consider uh, collinear as well as misaligned wind and wave conditions in the analysis. We applied HOC2 to, mo to model the um, monopile wind turbine as well as the uh, lifted blade system. Here is a, an, uh, an illustration of the monopile wind turbine. The contact of the monopile with seabed uh, are established using distributed spring model. Uh, this model is available in the OC3 phase two campaign. If we look at the response spectrum of the monopile top 
hub displacement. So this is an uh, FFT uh, transferred uh, spectrum of the uh, hub, hub displacement. We can observe uh, where in, in which frequency ranges the energy is concentrated. Here we can observe, observe two uh, peaks. The left peak corresponds to the wave frequency induced resonant peak. And the highest peak, uh, which refers to the first four aft mode of the monopile. This mode is the scrotal echo mode of the monopile foundation. So we see the, these responses in the, um, in the hub motion uh, spectrum, which means that uh, the monopile motion may be uh, affected by the wave forces, especially when wave periods are low and are close to the four aft mode then those resonant modes can be excited. I do not show you the lifted blade system, but this system basically consists of one single blade and uh, uh, two lift wire, one sling wire, and as well as two tagger lines. Here we observe the uh, several uh, two agar modes of the lift lifted system. Uh, FR1 and FT1 refers to the a rotational mode and frequency mode of the blade root. Um, in another work, we establish uh, this um, model modeling using MATLAB uh, Simulink. So the whole system was uh, was established using this reduced order model to to facilitate the development of control methods for the tugger lines. So the idea here is to control the forces in the tugger lines so that the motion of the blade root can be minimized. In the previous application, uh, we did not introduce, we did not introduce any uh, active control or the system is passive, passive. But here, the purpose is to control the tugger line forces in the two horizontal tugger lines. And the blade is subjected to aerodynamic loading. So here we implement an um, extended Kalman filter to predict the um, predict several sensor information along the blades. The control objective is to stabilize the blade position in mean wind direction and the blade yaw angle in order to reduce the relative motion between the blade root center and the hub. And the control input will be the tug line tension forces. We see that a few measurements will be done using the extended uh, um, common filter, that is to predict the position and orientation of the blade center of mass primarily. We can also uh, predict the wind speed, UW, at one point on the blade. Let's take a look at the result comparison. So without using active control, we see the, uh, the dash lines in these three figures, which refer to the uh, blade root motion in three direct directions, x, y, and the z directions. x is the dominant wind direction. Without using active control, we see that the responses in the wind direction can be quite large. The whole system is passive. But when active tug line control is implemented, we see that there's a quite dramatic reduction in the motions in the x direction. This is a case of a mean wind speed at 10 meter per second and turbulence intensity of 0.157. If we take a look at some response statistics, uh, the left figure shows us the, um, the standard deviation of the um, blade root motions in three directions with and without use of active control. We see that there is a quite large reduction in the uh, responses in the, in the displacement in the wind direction. And uh, if we look at the response maxima, which can also affect um, successful mating, we see that there's also a quite um, appreciable reduction in the response maxima. So when we implement the active control, we can reduce the blade root um, motion as well as the motion of the center of gravity quite significantly. Facilitate, facilitating the final mating process. If you are interested, you're welcome to read our paper 
published in Wind Energy in 2018. Now I move on to this concept of catamaran insulation vessel. Um, presently, there are several other researchers working with me that are looking at this concept to develop to a higher level. So the original catamaran insulation concept is to use this catamaran vessel, which has two separate monoholes connected together to transport uh, four wind turbine assemblies um, to the designated uh, offshore site. Then we use this catamaran vessel to install um, wind turbine assemblies onto uh, foundations. The foundations can either be monopile foundations or spa foundations, as long as, as the foundation are cylindrical. So it is um, possible to use the catamaran concept to do the installation work. The purpose of using a catamaran vessel um, is that catamaran vessel has very good hydrostatic stability. So when there are four wind turbines standing on the deck, uh, the stability of the whole system will still be good. And uh, there will be good insulation efficiency. That means we only need to have one offshore lift per wind turbine. And we can apply the uh, catamaran vessel to both monopile and the spa floating wind turbines. Um, the downside of such a concept that we need to develop uh, some specialized equipment and the feasibility of such a concept is yet to be demonstrated, especially uh, economic and the technical feasibility. Here I show you a few challenges of the concept. For the hydrodynamics, there will be hydrodynamic coupling uh, between the multiple bodies like the spa foundation and the, and the catamaran vessels. As the two monoholes of the catamarans are separate from each other, there will be several sloshing modes that can exist. And there will be viscous forces that must be accounted for during the modeling. The viscous uh, forces can occur to both to the spa and to the catamaran vessels. And for the structural dynamics, we have several coupled motion modes, especially when this catamaran vessel has been connected to the, to the floating foundation. We use mechanical coupling to couple them. And when wind turbine assembly is being lifted in the air, there are also uh, are challenges re relating to the control of the lifting equipment. Automatic control, we need to have automatic control in order to uh, keep station of the vessel during the installation. As wind turbines we will be transferred from the fore of the vessel to the aft to the aft prior to installation, we need to have active ballast system in order to achieve good position of the vessel. And before landing of the wind turbine onto the pre-installed foundation, we need to control the motion. That is to say, we need to have good motion tolerance and control and to minimize the landing forces after mating. In this, um, here I show you the installation procedure uh, of the catamaran insulation vessel. First, the vessel has to be connected to the spa foundation. Then the uh, lifting, gr lifting grip will grip a wind turbine and move it onto, uh, to make it hovering above the pre-installed foundation. Then uh, we'll, mod we'll monitor the relative motion between the tower bottom and the spa top, which is the focus of this work. Um, then we'll make the wind turbine assembly onto the pre-installed spa platform. And afterwards, the catamaran vessel will release the spa after installation and we'll start installing uh, another wind turbine. We focus on the relative motion and during this uh, phase, we look at the relative motion between the spa top and the wind turbine bottom the tower bottom to look at the uh, short-term responses of these two points. If these two points have quite two large excursions, that means that we need to think about ways to reduce the, uh, reduce the relative motions. Some brief information of the catamaran. It has a length of more than 140 meters and a breadth of approximately 60 meters. 
draft of the catamaran is eight meters um, when it's carrying four wind turbines. And the displacement mass is more than 18,000 tons. Some information of the spa. Here we consider a uh, 10 megawatt spa foundation, which has a displacement of uh, more than 11,000 tons. The draft of the spa is 70 meters uh, without the wind turbine. After the wind turbine is put onto the spa, the draft will increase to around 80 meters. Several modeling tools are used in this uh, survey. The DNV system package, including WADAM, uh, is used to perform hydrodynamic analysis of the two-body system in the frequency domain. Then those uh, frequency-dependent hydrodynamic coefficients are imported into CMO to perform the time domain coupled analysis. In CMO, we also include the wind forces acting on the parked wind turbines standing on the vessel. So we use Hawk2 to calculate the wind force coefficients in CMO. Here, we also managed to uh, implement some mechanical coupling as well as mooring systems in CMO in order to simulate the fully coupled uh, model. To model the wind effects, we, we have this uh, 10, megawatt, 10 megawatt wind turbine modeled in Hawk2, and we obtain the wind force coefficients, including the forces and the moments for each wind turbine. Then we import those wind coefficients into CMO to simulate the wind load effect. Here is an illustration of the sliding grippers that exist between the um, spa foundation and the catamaran. It is these sliding grippers that will constrain the uh, planar motion of the two bodies yeah, in the x, y direction. The spa will be constrained by mooring lines to, for station keeping purposes. Here, we do not explicitly model the delta lines, but provide some equivalent uh, yaw stiffness in the model. Here are some selected time domain results. If we look at the uh, relative motion radius at the mating point for a environmental condition of spectral peak period of 12 seconds, we see that the, uh, this critical relative motion radius will increase with the increase of significant wave height, which is reasonable. When we do not have wind or we, when we have wind, the differences uh, between these two environmental cases are quite uh, small because the wind forces are usually compensated by the uh, DP of the, uh, by the thrusters of the vessel. So the influence is relatively small, but in order to facilitate mating, at higher sea states, we need to have those guiding beams in order to, um, to, to avoid a large excursion of the mating point. That's very brief introduction of the, of the modeling work. If you're interested, you're welcome to read our journal paper or have further discussion with me um, to have a better understanding. Finally, I will touch upon the floating door concept. As you may have heard of before, the high wind demo, which is a 2.3 megawatt wind turbine, has been operating uh, off the coast of Norway since 2009. And this concept uh, has survived very harsh environmental conditions uh, with wind speed of 40 meters per second and significant wave height of more than nine meters. When it comes to installation of uh, spa, the spa wind turbine, we see that previously Equinor has applied this large crane vessel to do the uh, mating of wind turbine assembly and the pre-installed spa foundation. But such a mating phase must be carried out during summer times with very calm environmental conditions, with calm waters. How to do this throughout the year? Then we must avoid relative heat and heave and pitch motions of the two bodies. To do this, we uh, came up with the idea of using these, this large floating door concept. 
This idea was originally proposed by uh, Dr. Rune Itvik uh, at Equinor. Then I developed this idea further and, pro and, and proposed a uh, design optimization of the dock concept. So the idea is that we use this large floating dock uh, as seen in the right figure, uh, which can be used to tra transport it across the globe, across the globe. The dock itself um, can change its draft during transportation and operation. Here, I show you that the dock has quite a large draft, which is being operate, which is in operation. And the, the upright spar will be towed into the dock when the gate opens. Then we perform mating of the wind turbine components inside the dock, hoping that the dock will shield the spa from external excitation of environmental loads. Then after the wind turbine uh, components have been completed, have, have been installed, and then we were towed out the fully assembled spa floating wind turbine to the designated offshore site nearby. So the design of the dock is primarily concerned with um, the hydrostatic stability, um, intact stability, um, as, well, as well as minimization of the material consumption. Uh, if you're interested, you're welcome to read our paper published in Marine Structures in 2020. As the dock is hollow, it does not have a bottom. The design challenges of such a dock with a large diameter is that there will be hydrodynamic effects, including the piston mode resonance that is the movement of the water column up, up, up and down, as you see in the first, uh, in the top figure. And there will be also linear sloshing effects that can occur inside the dock, because you basically have a, you have a bottomless, uh, bottomless cup, which, can shake, which is shaked in the, in the waves. <clears throat> so if you're interested, you can also uh, do relative research in this area to further optimize the hydrodynamic performance of the dock itself. <clears throat> Future outlook of, uh, of wind turbine installation. Uh, there have been many efforts that is um, taking place in this area. And uh, we see that the wind turbine installation vessels uh, plays a very critical role in performing wind turbine installation in a cost efficient manner. And uh, there have been many ongoing efforts to further develop uh, tailor-made vessels to, uh, to install wind turbines um, more efficiently. Specialized equipment is very key to, um, to single blade installation, especially. There have been many uh, lifting equipment being developed over time. Numerical tools, uh, we do not have yet ready um, numerical tools that can, uh, that can be used to simulate wind turbines. We must consider how we can um, use existing tools to, to do the modeling in a very uh, efficient way, especially for those who do not have um, much experience with modeling such a complex system. And I have to say that the uh, installation technology evolves together with the um, floating foundations for wind turbines, like semi-submersible floating wind turbines. Then the installation is relatively simple because of its, the good towability uh, of the floating foundation. So there will be many uh, work related to this area as well. Okay, that's my very quick and brief overview of the uh, challenges um, of um, offshore wind turbine installation. If you have any questions, you're welcome to contact me uh, for further uh, exchange of ideas or research collaboration. Uh, thank everyone for your attention. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Jiang. I personally enjoyed the presentation very much. And as soon as I had a question, you immediately <laughs> had a reply to that question that they had. So uh, I would like to start the Q&A with uh, actually uh, a very basic question, a very mm -hmm. basic question that uh, uh, that might have come to anybody's mind. Uh, it might be a stupid question, I apologize in advance, but uh, given all the slushing effect and the corrosion that I'm pretty sure is gonna happen on the offshore equipment, what's mm. basically the necessity to install these wind turbines 
uh, offshore because, you know, we live in the Netherlands and I see a lot of them on the highways, you know, sideways in the highways that are onshore. Mm. I think it has some relation with the wind energy that is more powerful in the offshore. I'm not sure. So please enlighten in that regard. Mm. Yeah, you know, the offshore wind, I think, has many advantages compared to onshore wind. First, mm-hmm. you know, uh, people will have quite strong resistance to install wind turbines in your neighborhood. Nobody wants to see such a giant wind turbine, uh, you know, whizzing by your neighborhood. It's good to see a wind turbine, which is far from your home, but when it's close to your home, the noise uh, generated by wind turbine can be an issue. And the, you know, the, the visual impact is another issue. So I think um, for many Norwegians, it's, um, it's a big taboo to, to see wind turbines and to discuss wind turbines sometimes on TVs. Mm-hmm. They don't want to see wind turbines. Uh, yeah, anywhere. But for offshore, there's very little conflict between wind turbine and, and people. There can be some conflicts between fishermen, for example, but generally speaking, the, the visual impact is less. Mm-hmm. And another advantage of offshore wind turbine is that um, offshore wind is usually stronger than onshore wind. So the wind is stronger and, and the wind speed is higher and the steadier with less turbulence. Mm-hmm. So we can generate a lot of power offshore. And you know, some countries they do not necessarily have um, have many many land areas. So for countries like Japan, for example, then uh, offshoring offers a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. explains it uh, very well. And another on the, on the more technical side, another very fundamental question: You brought up several installation techniques in regards to how to lift the blades and mm. uh, install them on the vessels and mm. how Equinor does it using their mm. platforms that they already mm. have for extraction of oil and gas. But uh, what about the number of blades and the shape of them? I'm pretty sure somewhere down the line there has been an optimization study of how many of these blades to use and what should be the shape because as far as I remember the things that we used as a kid was you know they had more cross section that you, when mm. you puffed at them, they rotated a little bit faster. I don't know how yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that translates mm. into a bigger schema of wind turbines, but can you give a little bit of insight on that? Okay, yeah. Um, I think the, the wind turbine, the present day wind turbine blades are the so-called Danish, Danish, um, Danish wind turbines, uh, Danish blades. They are quite slender. And if you look at the cross section of air, an airfoil, it's basically uh, stream, streamlined. So the design of wind turbine blades is primarily to, um, to maximize the, the power production efficiency. So many um, aeroelastic guys are, are performing such analysis to determine the shape of the wind turbine blades. They are usually quite elongated to maximize the lift forces, which are the useful forces to produce power and to, to minimize the drag forces, which are the kind of the waste uh, you know, that is lost. So design of blades involves um, lots of insights into the aerodynamics, and it also involves um, a lot of um, insight in, of the materials because the blades must be designed to be very, very durable, right? And how how do we how do we um, do away with the blades when they have reached their designated lifetime? We cannot just throw them away. So this is also uh, some interesting research topics that people are working on today. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure I've answered your question. Yes, yeah, indeed. let me yes. know. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Jiang. Uh, I'm pretty sure the audience, the, the people that are gonna watch the video recording in the future are gonna come up with questions. Did I first of all digest the, the very extensive talk that you had? You touched on very many different topics and mm-hmm. they, have, they have the email address on the screen that they can reach out to you or rather mm-hmm. send us an email and we will put you through to Dr. Jiang, our editorial board member. We're, we are very privileged to have you on our board as well as have the webinar for you uh, from your site today. Thank you. And as I do not see any more questions, uh, I wish everybody a nice day ahead and hope to see you, Dr. Jiang, again in our webinar sessions uh, sometime in the future with the new state of the art. Thanks everyone and uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's my great honor to be here. And I yeah. thank you again for the invitation to attend this webinar series and sure. contribute Thanks. to the growth of uh, SM Applied Sciences. Great. Thank you. Nice day, everyone. Good day. Okay. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs>